what an epic intro i must say guys welcome back to the channel this is curtis your auto diagnostic consultant with another case study programming it is but we're going to do things a little bit differently today okay this is a theme presentation of a video game i used to like video games and i hope you do too anyways let me shut up let's pick our tools so we're going to do with the Maxisys Elite. We're going to be using a great battery maintainer, a very strong Wi-Fi connection, and a USB cable that comes in the kit. We're going to need all these elements to do this procedure. Next, let me give you a little bit of info on this case study. So the client is in the auto repair industry and he specializes in European very good client of mine never calls me only when he has like a really serious problem um, but uh, yeah he does a lot of European and in this situation um, he told me that um, the headlights weren't working properly diagnosed it the football module ended up being faulty so he purchased a new one and just wanted me to walk him through it uh, Corneria can you tell the audience a little bit about the footwell module Sure, no problem. The footwell module, FRM, is an electrical nodal point in the footwell on the driver's side. Mm. It picks up the signals from the doors and controls the lighting. It also controls the adaptive headlights and is also the interface to the dashboard. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So, let me connect and calibrate the NPC controls. That just means connect a team viewer, guys. <laughs> There we are. All right, so the first step we're gonna do, we're gonna click that programming button on the upper right. It's gonna go through some prompts. It IDs the vehicle. And it's gonna ask us, I think it's gonna go through all the modules. Yes, it can communicate with the control unit. So it's going through all the units, seeing what's available for programming. And then it's asking us if the control unit replace or replace, which it was. So we're going to click yes. If you're not replacing control units and you're just updating a specific software, then you would just click no and, and proceed. All right. So the client clicked yes. And this is where we need to locate the footwell module. So it's all the way down. Coming up soon. Bam, there we go. Footwell module selected. We're going to click OK. And it's going to take us to the next screen, which should be the interface. There we go. We're going to click programming slash coding and then selective updates. So selective updates also in the upper right. We're going to select that. And then once we do that, it's going to give us um, some pre-populated checkboxes. What I always do is I go to the top and just uncheck everything so you know I don't program something on accident. And then I'll go back and manually put it in. So the football module is also located at the bottom. And um, we're going to select programming, encoding, and replace. All three of those options. And then we'll proceed with the uh, procedure. So let's just wait on the client while we load. Okay, there we go. All three of those. All right, then the last step is to execute the measurement plan. Um, this says three minutes. I, th I think it took a little bit longer, but uh, ensure the diagnostic tool is connected to the internet, which it is. You can see his battery maintainer is good. And now we're connecting to the Autel servers and downloading the calibration file. All right, that's almost done. And then, all right, download complete. Press OK to continue the session. All right, and you can see on the upper right, the VCI disconnected. It did this on purpose because it wants us to connect via USB cable, so it's a safety measure. All right, so this is where the client went around in his toolbox, got the USB cable, 
plugged it in. Meanwhile, while he did that, I went ahead and uh, unpaired the Bluetooth. And then when we go back, when those conditions are met, the uh, Autel will recognize it and it'll let us proceed. So turn off the engine, which it was, and then uh, switch on the ignition. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, look, the hardest thing about programming in, in general is the initial like setup. Once you know that function route on how to get there, it's pretty much clockwork and, unless you get some random error, which, which it does happen. You know, if it does happen, you can go back and try to repeat the procedure again and just keep your fingers crossed you didn't fry anything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you'll see during this sequence, it's going to give us some manual procedures to do. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, if, if Autel is going to be making programming available for other manufacturers. Um, there was speculation on it um, that, let's say that window is open, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. So it would be nice, but it's a big project to do something like this. Um, if you think about all the legal ramifications and stuff and servers, so turn the ignition off and remove it from the, for the slot. And once you do that, the Autel automatically picks it up, meaning it'll detect that it's been removed and then it'll proceed. And then it's going to ask us to put the key back in. Insert remote and turn the ignition on. So once you pop it in and turn it on, the Autel is going to let us proceed again. All right, so this is asking us to close all the windows and doors and I remember the client told me that his trunk was open so he went around closed it and then once that all those conditions are met he's gonna click OK and we're gonna proceed okay now when it's initializing front power window regulator, when you're in the vehicle, you're going to start to see the windows going up and down, up and down. All right. Don't freak out. It's just part of the procedure. Okay. And um, after this, I think there's a couple more uh, manual procedures. Let's see. Clear fault code memory. I think we're almost done here. All right, so yeah, turn off the ignition and remove the key. And then wait for 10 seconds. So once he does that, the auto will prompt us the countdown. Okay. Seven, six. All right. And then from here, we're going to put it right back in and turn the ignition on. Awesome. Programming complete. Please end the session and clear any existing error codes. Okie dokie. So let's see what codes we got. And go to auto scan. And let's see. Pass, 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 pass. Man, I wish my report card looked like this. Pass. No faults. That's what I'm talking about. But more importantly, did it fix the problem? Yep, lights went on, car started, no problem. Guys, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay tuned for the next video.